Before I purchased the Sony zv 10 I was using a different camera quite a lot. And that camera was the Canon G7X Mark III. A few videos ago, I said that I hadn't picked this camera up in months. And I decided this past weekend to take the camera out and see if I was delusional, if I was just new gear obsessed, or if this camera needed to be replaced in my kit. And the answer may surprise you. Also in today's video, I'm gonna answer the question, is this camera still any good in 2024? Should you pick one up? Should you pick something else up? Or should you just wait for the next iteration of this if it's coming? How's it going everybody? My name is Larry G. I'm a content creator here, helping other content creators talking about cameras and documenting a creator journey. A few things I wanna get out of the way early in this video is that this is the Canon G7X Mark III. Like I said, this camera came out in 2019. So at this point, uh, it's coming up on five years. This is a five year old camera. For those of you who do care about specs, this camera boasts a one inch CMOS sensor that shoots 20.1 megapixels. It has a 4.2 times optical zoom. It does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and the version that I have is the black version. This is a point and shoot camera. Um, there is no interchangeable lens. There is a flip up screen, not a flip out screen. Uh, it does tilt and do that thing and then like a tilt down kind of, but this is the extent. The other main feature is that there is a pop-up flash uh, there is no hot shoe on this camera, but those are the ergonomics of the camera. The next set of functions I wanna go over are the control dials. So if you take a look at this, you'll see that there's the option to shoot manual, shutter priority, aperture priority, a cine mode, a program mode, auto mode, scene mode, video mode. Now, I've used this camera as a content creator, and I believe I purchased this around 2020, so a year after its release, and I was using it fairly heavily. I wanted something that could fit in my pocket. It was extremely affordable. I think I paid $700 for this camera, and I loved it. I brought this thing everywhere. It really opened up a lot of possibilities for me bringing cameras to places that normally was like, oh, you can't bring a big camera in here. It also helped me feel more comfortable just carrying something every single day and having a camera in my hand. I brought this camera to work with me and document my work journey. Uh, I brought this camera with me on the weekends, on dates uh, with my wife. I brought this camera everywhere and it really got me into the practice. And so if you're looking for a camera that's not your phone and you wanna start practicing just bringing an additional device places, I think this camera does an excellent job in that area. The other main area I wanna highlight is the auto function. So as a photographer, I usually prefer to shoot in manual or have more control over things. But if I am trying to live in the moment and just document my life, I really trust the auto function of this camera. I, I know that I can just throw it in auto. And as long as I'm choosing the focus point on the camera that it does a pretty decent job. If I want extra light, the pop-up flash is always there to help me. Next, I wanna talk about the quality of the images that come out of this camera. So this camera does have the ability to shoot raw and see raw, which is more of a compressed version of raw. In my experience, shooting raw on this camera, it does deliver. You are getting uh, less image quality out of this. And truthfully, if you're posting to social media, which is what this content and this channel is more about, then this camera is excellent. Um, you don't need 30 megapixels, 40 megapixels, 50 meg. You don't need all of that resolution if you're posting on social media. Now, if you want your shots to be looking banger and all that stuff, then yeah, go ahead, get the higher megapixel cameras. But if you're just posting and you just wanna capture the moment, you wanna live in the moment, then I think the one inch sensor does just fine. Also speaking to the quality of the imagery here, whenever you do shoot in RAW, you do have the same flexibility that you would get with a higher end camera. I'm not gonna go as far as to say that it's the same amount of dynamic range, it's not even close. But if you wanna adjust some colors, you wanna play around with white balance, you wanna make sure you get some of those tones 
uh, closer to your style, the raw functionality of the images that come out of this are good for doing that. The next thing I wanna talk about is something I mentioned earlier, and that is bringing this camera places where normally you're not allowed. Because this camera is so small, and because it is so non-threatening, people don't care. For example, this weekend I went to a concert and normally you can't bring big cameras into concerts unless you're shooting them or have a media pass. And I always try to bring a camera with me. I don't love relying on my phone camera. Uh, I really wanna just put my phone away when I'm at a concert, if I'm being honest. And so bringing a camera with me is always helpful for me to document that moment. And so this weekend I chose to bring the Canon G7X Mark III. And I was able to, one, secure a nice spot, which is always great whenever you go to a show. But from that spot, I was able to capture some amazing images using the zoom function on this, using the settings and my knowledge of cameras and photography skills. I was able to capture some really amazing images that I'm actually pretty proud of. Now, shooting in music venues, you know it's gonna be dark, so you have to crank the ISO a bit. So you're gonna get some of that grain. If all I'm able to bring is the point and shoot and I have to deal with a little bit of grain, it adds to the memory, it adds to the nostalgia, it adds to the grunge and grit of shooting a show. And so I'm actually quite proud of the images that came out of here. I know that I was able to get the best quality version of these images with the one inch sensor. And that's truthfully the point of bringing this camera. It's to document and not care about the highest quality possible. You know, if you want higher quality, then you're not gonna be picking up this camera. But if you want to live in the moment, you wanna pull something out of your pocket and you wanna just document your life or your journey or whatever you're doing, I think that this camera does a good job. When it comes to the focusing on this camera, whenever it focuses, I can say that it has nailed focus. However, if you're shooting in auto mode, you have to tell it where to focus. If you're trying to be a little more creative and have foreground elements, you may want to just touch the screen and tell it where to focus. When it comes to the ergonomics of this camera, it has a very small little bump grip thing, which is not the best, which leads me to this accessory that I mentioned earlier. It's a little grip, but it also has a cold shoe mount on it because if you're gonna use this for video, then there's nowhere to mount a microphone. Lastly, I wanna talk about a few of the video features in this camera in case you're trying to pick it up for video. It does shoot 4K 30, uh, 1080, 60, and there's a couple more cool things that this camera does. So, like I said, the autofocus is pretty solid, but it also has a built-in ND filter, which is something that you normally don't see on cameras at this price point or this small. And that is extremely helpful when you're out and it's a bright, sunny day. The last thing is the picture styles. Like most Canon cameras, it comes with multiple picture styles. When I compare the experience of the Canon G7X Mark III to something like a Sony ZV-E10, it's not really a fair comparison because one is a point and shoot and one is an interchangeable lens camera. Before I got the Sony ZV-E10, I was filming videos and creating content and doing things with the Canon G7X Mark III, but truthfully, it was more of like a backup camera, the backup of a backup camera. I would not bring that camera to client photo shoots and expect to get quality work out of that camera, whereas I have brought and will bring the Sony ZV-E10 to client shoots and get quality imagery out of that camera. The Canon G7X Mark III, like I said earlier, it's more of a companion camera. It's more of a middle ground between your cell phone and something like the ZV-E10 or something in that same line. Truthfully, if you just wanna go one step above your phone, I think that's an excellent place to start. The cons to that camera, the main one that I can really think of is the battery life. Uh, that battery dies insanely fast, especially if you're doing video work. I believe that if you're shooting 4K 30 or 4K 24 even, uh, you can expect, in my experience, maybe an hour and a half of use. It also has a record time limit. I believe it's 10 minutes before the camera shuts off. Uh, 
things like that really limit my use of that camera for video. However, I can say that when I was shooting the concert with this camera, the battery lasted the entire time. Uh, I brought that camera out on a photo walk earlier, just around the neighborhood, and I brought it to that show that night, and the only use was photography, and the battery lasted literally all day. Throughout this video, I've been throwing up images and things that I've captured with this camera so you're able to see the quality. Like I said, this is something that I think is great for bringing around with you to document your life, but I would not take it a step above that. So overall, is this camera good for 2024? My answer is yes. As someone who's interested in technology, it's so easy to want the new shiny thing, the new shiny toy with all the bells and whistles. But when I take a step back and I look at what works, what gets the job done, and what do I really need for this job, then the Canon G7X is a great everyday carry camera. It's something that I actually thought about selling, but I'm actually gonna hold on to and I plan to keep for a long time because it's something that I can just bring with me to document my life. When I wanna take higher quality pictures, I'll choose a different tool, but when it comes to just capturing those moments, the Canon G7X does just fine. If you'd like to pick up this camera, please consider using one of the links down below. It is an affiliate link, so I will get a bit of a kickback, but at no additional cost to you. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Larry G. Until next time, do the work, believe in yourself, and keep creating. Peace.